Alrighty, uh, in this video, I'm just going to be spectating a casual game between Kimmy314 and Panda Bear Guy, and we're going to be commentating live on their play and uh, hopefully providing them for some constructive criticism for the brand new coaching channel that's been set up in the Discord. Alrighty, I'm here. Welcome back. So, I, I already know what I'd be doing on this kingdom, but I'm kind of interested to hear y'all's thoughts first. Um, so I have 3-4. My thoughts are starting with a fisherman and maybe a smithy. Okay. And for me, um, I like the 3-4 as well. Um, I'm thinking the fisherman, but I also like, I generally like to trash. So I might pick up the trade trade route early on, just to get rid of some cards early. And what's the long term goal here in this kingdom? Um, seeing as there's not really a village other than sculptor, which is kind of slow, I feel like money. <laughs> Okay, and that's looking like smithy big money for you, I assume, based on the opening you're describing? Yeah. Yeah, smithy money. Okay. Now, I think tournament gives you trusty steed, which is a village, but that's pretty much all you can get. Procession. You have to have a province in order to get the prize, right? So that takes a while to What about get to. processioning experiments? Procession experiment would function as a village. Mm, yeah. Yeah, throne room variants um, pretty much always function as villages. You know, throne room, crown, royal carriage, etc. Because you spend one action playing it, and then you play the action card itself twice. So like, if you take a card like Fisherman or Experiment or Tournament that says plus one action, and you procession it, you will end up getting plus two action out of it. Hmm. Let's see, plus spies, ranger, and trader. Between the two, I would assume either two or four rangers. Would y'all rather I describe my thoughts now or wait till the end after y'all have played it out? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, do, do you have a preference, Panda? Uh, I would like to hear it. Yeah, now? okay, let's start. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, subtracting out, I think I think it was the last thing Panda Bear Guy said about procession and experiment. If you ignore the, that interaction for a second, uh, I would agree that this is a very money-ish kingdom. Because, yeah, it's really short on actions. And then two things that I think, two things that push it towards money. First is the trashing is really bad. Trade Root's just a really weak trasher in general. Um, I mean, you can trash, but it's, it's pretty slow. So, it's hard to get trashed. Salt the Earth uh, is something that really incentivizes strategies that end the game fast. Like, you know, a simple money strategy that takes provinces very soon. Because the problem with money is it starts to fizzle out, you know. Uh, you get two or three provinces and your deck starts to fall apart and the engine, like, you know, sails past you. But with Salt the Earth, maybe you stop hitting eight, <laughs> but you can just keep buying Salt the Earth and keep trashing the provinces <laughs> for four, yeah. and then you end the game anyway. And suddenly there's just no provinces left for the engine to catch up. So Salt the Earth usually pushes you know, strategies at green sooner. And then the last thing that I think suggests money is you know tournament. Uh, you were saying like tournament has good prices in there. Uh, followers is really strong. Trusty Steed and Princess are often really strong. But to get the, the prizes, you have to green early by taking a province. And so that is yet another thing that incentivizes a strategy that just like stays simple, hits eight soon, as you get prizes mm -hmm. from tournament. So all of that... Um, would make me want to play money. I think I would probably play with like a sculptor or two to just like fill my deck with silvers and then like smithy or wild hunt for draw. I think that mm -hmm. that would be a pretty good money kingdom. But there is one interaction here which is I think just crazy strong, which is the procession experiment interaction. And uh, you were touching on that. So one thing it does is it, it does function as a village. So it overcomes the biggest hurdle to building an engine here is you process experiments and then you will be getting village effects out of that. But that combination, procession experiment, is just 
I don't know, it, it escalates so fast because you process an experiment, you're basically playing like two laboratories, you're also getting a village effect, and process an experiment gets you a new procession at the end of that process, then you use the new procession to process more experiments, and then you procession the processions, you get sculptors, then you can sculpt more experiments, and like that thing is just going to snowball obscenely fast. And so, the, quick question yeah. on how those cards interact. Um, is this one of those cases where it loses track of the card? Because when you play experiment, it's returned to the supply, so it doesn't get trashed. Is that accurate? Yeah, that is that is correct. The procession trashes the card at the end of the, the interaction, and so what would happen here is experiment would return itself to the supply, and then procession would fail to trash it. You know, okay. even if procession if it did... What did you say? Uh, I was going to ask, if it fails to trash it, then can you still gain a cart costing one more Yes, it? because it doesn't say if you do. It just says trash it and gain. Yeah, that, that's um, correct. Yeah. You know, a lot of the, there's It depends on the wording. There's, I think, two main ways you'll see the wording that make it conditional. It could say, like, trash this. If you do or if you did, then gain a card, blah, blah, blah. And then another text that you'll see a lot of times is, like, trash this to do X. Like, Mining Village, I think, currently says trash this to gain two coins. So if you see, like, trash this to do something or trash this and if you did do something, then failing to trash it, you wouldn't get the new effect. But Got cards it. like Procession or Tragic Hero will just say trash this and they'll say do something else. And so even if you failed to do the, the trashing part, you do the, the something else. So you will still get a new card, which would usually be Procession here. Um, and now, Procession Experiment is the interaction that's been around for a while since... When was Experiment? I think, I think that was Nocturne? Renaissance? Nocturne? I think it's Nocturne. Um, uh, it's Renaissance. Experiment is Renaissance. Oh, is it? Okay. It shows how well I know the expansions. Um, but in any case, this combination has gotten a lot more prevalent all of a sudden with Menagerie, because the exact same combo works with horses. Procession Horse, because Horse is like identical to Experiment, uh, is mm. also incredibly strong. So if you ever see Procession in pretty much any horse gainer, like Cavalry or Livery or hostelry, I would just be asking myself, how do I start processing horses as fast as possible? <laughs> um, mm. Because like you, you start setting it up, and like it will very quickly just like snowball itself. Um, and so that, that's what I would be doing here, at least. Interesting. So would you open Experiment Procession, then? I think Experiment Procession way. is very much a viable opening here. Um, yeah, I think that's what I would do. Yeah, actually, 100%. 100% that's what I would do. The, the, the one risk, of course, is the procession will be a dud card if you don't draw it with one mm -hmm. experiment. But yeah. this kingdom has one other thing that I think resolves that one risk. Do you all see? You get two experiments. <laughs> well, yeah, so obviously two experiments does help that. I've seen people open procession experiment a number of times whenever this comes up. Just go straight for the process experiment strategy. I think yeah. that's pretty viable. But I think there's one thing in this kingdom that makes it even more viable than, than normal to open that problem. Something that makes the risk of drawing procession dead a lot less relevant. Y'all seen it? Is it the uh, rat? Is it the rat? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So even if you draw the procession with no experiments or something, you can use procession with the way of the rat to just get yourself a new procession anyway. So yeah, I, I think I'm liking the procession experiment opening. I'll start with that to see how it goes. Okay. Nice to meet you guys, by the way. I am kind of new to the Dominion um, community. so. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> oh, Kimmy has a sad hand. Panda has the nice hand. <laughs> I do have a very <laughs> sad hand. Yeah. I can't even buy an experiment. Yeah. Cute, cute. Well, but you can do what he mentioned off. earlier about uh, way of the yeah. rat and discarding. It's still sad, though. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah, pa Panda Bear unquestionably has the better turn here by, by a large margin. So with five. Oh, I could get a fisherman. Well, I feel like I would do... Oh, I don't okay. think the, the tournament as much. I would think just another procession, probably. Oh, you're not a procession? I mean, tournament's fine, but I don't think you need the money so much. Um, procession or ranger. Ranger has plus buy as well. you want to undo that's okay uh i'm just not sure what to do with the five either um i think there's one card that stands out to me as good at five here i feel like sculptor, sculptor? for me yeah i i agree with that like i said I, the strategy here for me i think is just line up processions with experiments as much as possible if i can get a deck that does that a bunch it's it's gonna win somehow 
I don't even know exactly what the end game is, but it's going to win somehow. You're going to empty all the piles faster than you know what to do with. No, Caroline. shut. <laughs> Panda's already lined it up twice. Can uh, I once again? <laughs> yeah. This is uh, a bit hmm. So I'm trying to think. Do I play my experiment and oh, act, and and hope to draw my possession here? Because it it needs to be within these three cards. Well, so you actually can know with certainty your possession is not in those three cards. Because so look at how your turns have gone. So actually, let me let me talk about Panda Bear's first turn and then uh, Panda Bear's turn oh, first. Oh right, before, I just started um, already. You you play. We we can get to your play. Yeah. Yeah. So Panda, I think is thinking about what to gain. So get a ranger. And I would think probably just another sculptor. Yeah. yeah I forgot that yeah. I discarded the possession earlier, so it's in yeah. my discard, at least. So yeah, I so guess then. Now for Kimmy's turn. Do I play the possession and then way of the rat the other possession to gain a copy of it and then buy more possession? Oh, sorry. Experiment. I, I meant. Yeah, so first let's think about what cards you have, because you, you actually can already know this. You know, it's always helpful to think about Dominion, not so much in terms of turns, or sometimes it's helpful to think in terms of, in terms of turns, but for deck tracking purposes, it's usually better to think in terms of shuffles, right? So you put 13 cards into your first shuffle, your 10 starting cards plus two experiments in a procession. And then so far you've seen, uh, what did you see? Two sticks, procession, two, two coppers, coppers procession, six. and you see three more coppers. So you know down there are two coppers in an estate. So you, you can know, even though you've got two processions, uh, they're not coming up because you haven't shuffled your deck since you right. saw the first procession or gained the second one. And so, do you want to draw that? Um, one thing to think about is whether you want to trigger this shuffle. You know, if you play both experiments, you're going to trigger a shuffle, and then what's going to be in that new shuffle? It's going to be four... What? How many coppers? Procession, seven... So you're going to draw... Oh, right. Yeah, like th think about for a second what happens if you play both experiments. You'll have a hand that is... Uh, how many coppers is five that? Coppers five five coppers estate. in an estate. And then one of the next cards. Um, and you'll hit five, which is not bad. But then your next turn is going to be probably really bad. You're going to have a hand that's like... Yeah, like I also won't have any more experiments because I'll have yeah. returned them. Yeah, exactly. You'll have a hand that's like two processions, two estates or something. Um, yeah, it is Chromeridium. I don't know if you're listening in, but I'm coaching them over voice chat. Actually, if you're not listening in, I don't know how you're hearing this in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> Let me check the Discord. Okay, yeah, they're listening. <laughs> um, bit of a catch-22 there. Yeah, so if you, if you play both experiments, you trigger a shuffle that would be really bad looking. You have, like, two processions in hand and nothing to do with them. Uh, so I would think it's probably better to play one experiment than not to play any, because you already hinted at the reason, which is you can yeah. discard to gain a new one. So I would play, yeah. like, one experiment, and then rat the other one, and, uh, I'm not totally sure no. what you get here. Probably two more experiments? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that's, that's what I'm cool. thinking. I feel like I haven't even hit my <laughs> yeah. first one yet. Yeah, right. Well, you got a good hand coming up next turn. Gotta guarantee those hits. Hmm. Yeah, I think that looks pretty fine. Panda, again, the experiments. Now, I would I would have thought seriously about triggering that shuffle at the very least, because I think you might have just done the thing I was describing about, you know, Kimmy doing, is I don't think, if I'm not mistaken, I've, I've kind of forgotten, but I'm pretty sure the rest of your shuffle just has, like, what, a procession, a, a ranger, and no experiments coming up? Am I wrong about that? You have a sculpture uh, down there, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, sculptor, I, yeah. I think you very likely just created a dodge shuffle for yourself by playing the tournament. That might not have been worth it. Um, I see. Yeah. Yeah, because this hand doesn't look amazing. I don't think you particularly want silvers all that much, and that's the only thing you can really get off the sculptor effectively. All right. Um, now Kimmy's getting in gear. Um, I like the processions. I, I would just take a lot of processions and 
Yeah, I, I'm liking the way this is getting played so far. I like the, the choice to wrap the experiment. A very, very real risk for experiments here, by the way, that I think Kimmy might have gotten the lead on, is if you both identify the good strategy here, which is procession experiment, you might have a scenario where one player just monopolizes the experiments. Like, you just keep them all in your deck, and then each time you spin them, you gain them back later in the turn, and then your opponent just never gets the chance to do the combo. So, like, if I were Kimmy, I might just start thinking about, like, how I can keep the experiments in my deck and not <laughs> let Panda have them back. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so what does Panda have coming up? Uh, like a procession and a bunch of junk cards, I think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's a little gross. I'm not totally sure what the best play is um, for Panda right now. Procession experiment makes sense. I'd probably just take more processions, honestly. Like, if you can keep those experiments in your deck, then you really can't have too many processions. Uh, I would not play the Ranger first. Like, oh. just in general, as a rule of thumb, like, do the thing that gives you more information before the thing that doesn't give you more information. Right? Like, let's say you play the experiments and you draw some random unimportant cards, like four coppers. Then you could play the ranger afterwards anyway, you know. But maybe you play your experiments and you find like a higher priority card, like you find a a sculptor you really wanted to play or something. If you hadn't already played the the ranger, you could choose to do that. Um, I like taking the experiment back. That seems good. Do I take a silver? <laughs> um, I would not take a silver. Like I don't think this deck really needs silvers, and if it does, you can get like an unlimited supply off of sculptors. Um, for me, it was trade route or nothing. I think nothing is totally fine. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, Panda is just in an awkward spot as a result of the, um, the experiment. The <laughs> like, the perfect play here, I think, would have been sculpt for an experiment and then procession it. Uh-huh. I don't think I liked sculpting for a silver as m well. Actually, <laughs> like the, my thought would be like take an action card so that you can process it like immediately. Um, what do you say? Like a man or something. A fi yeah, fisherman or tournament. Those are both non-terminal, so you process them and you can keep playing. Um, both of those would be fine. I mean, maybe you could even like take a trade route and process that just to get thin, because mm -hmm. you know. And I might be struggling for draw now. And now Kimmy draws like the entire deck. If this is turn seven and just like look at the log, this is how procession experiment games tend to go. So I, you can definitely afford to play one more experiment, no question, because there's three experiments in the pile. And you knew, you know, like if you had to gain four back anyway, then gaining four is as easy as gaining three. Okay. Now, do I get two rangers to get that like double flip? Now that I have like, the like I can buy the experiment. Um, I would probably just take the last possession where you have the, the chance. Now, in general, and this is this is true for a lot of throne room variations. Is with the exception of I guess like mastermind. You generally want to play the throne room on the throne room. Y'all are familiar with that interaction, rather than yeah. Uh, what was that, Kimmy? Uh, I was saying yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so with procession, there's kind of often an additional reason to want to do it that way, which is that you get an additional five cost card by trashing your procession. Um. Yeah. So now you're gonna have hella gains. I do wonder if you want to keep processing all the processions or not. You might want to save some for next turn. Uh, I mean, Kimmy likely could win next turn. Like, I would not be surprised if there was a pile out in the following turn. Um, t 
tournaments all right. Uh, definitely want to take some sculptures, I think, off of the, uh, the procession gain. And in, in fact, I think I might just, yeah, you, you, I would think, actually, let, let me ask you, what do you think is the most important thing to do right now before I say anything? Uh, I, I have at least one idea about something I think is very important to do this turn. And I'm interested in well, what you're thinking. Gaining, rebuying the experiments. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that, that's exactly what I was thinking, is how do I get all of the experiments back on my deck and not in Panda's deck? <laughs> and so I think there's a good way to do that here. Um, but I, th I think you've done this in a little of a suboptimal order, but I think you can still get all of them. You need nine coins. I think, so bear in mind, your processions are... Like, there's, like, a little chain right now. And when you're in that chain, you're going to gain a bunch of extra sculptors off of those processions. Oh. And, right? Because the processions are processioning themselves right now. And so as soon as it resolves... Oh, oh well. Oh, screw that right. up. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say is if you wait for the procession chain to resolve, then the sculptors are going to go into your discard, and then you can draw all the sculptors up. Um, mm. I mean, one sculptor, I guess, is enough to get all three, all six experiments. But you could have gotten, like, more of them. You're very close to piling out already. <laughs> uh, oh, now I can draw my sculptors. Actually, is there... Yeah, I think if we thought through this, there might be a win on this turn. I think you're a little bit short on... Actually, no, I think there is a win this turn. Mm. Uh, I, have you missed it? Do you have more uh, sculptors in your deck? Oh, maybe, oh, yes. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. Think, yeah. Take a second and think about this. See if you can find a win this turn. Hmm. So what what would a win look like? Like what, what cards do you end up having to gain? Um. Uh, well, I have to gain at least one victory point and um empty out three piles. So I'm guessing somehow empty up the sculptors. Yeah. So is there any easy way to gain sculptors here? I think I got it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's a very easy way. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, discarding. Yeah. And then you can draw back to those sculptors. And right. now to play them to now you've got the one in hand looks like yep Ooh, Ooh, don't, okay. oh don't oh, oh no 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 why'd you play that <laughs> no oh. <laughs> you can undo that uh, I can... actually you're you're still fine actually wait you you can still win from this position obviously like undo would make it easier but yeah there we go <laughs> see you can you can still you still got it. Um, and that was turn seven. <laughs> wow, well, that was kind of crazy. Yeah, that's, nice. <laughs> that's procession experiment for you. Turn seven, the game's over. Y'all want to try another one? Oh, that is crazy. Uh, yeah, I think I have time for another one. I might have to All leave right. in the middle, All right. but we'll see. We'll try to do one more then. This looks more like a base set kingdom. The chapel got bandit. What are y'all thinking on this one? It looks like draw chapel. is terrible. Let's see, what do we have? Crop routine. Were you saying something about chapel, Kimmy? Yeah, I was thinking go chapel engineer and then just trash all my cards into engineer up 
some four cost cards, maybe silver, question mark. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to build an engine here? I guess that's the first question. Um, no, I don't think so. There's not a lot of card draw from what I can see. I guess there's crop rotation, which gives you like one, two, yeah, two drop. Too weak. Yeah. Uh, so I think y'all have noticed the key thing of this kingdom, which is you can't really build an engine here because there's just no draw. You're capped at maximum possible scenario, a six card hand, if you discard an estate to crop rotation, which is not really enough to draw an engine. You got plenty of trashing, plenty of action. Got some gains with like engineer, maybe rogue or noble brigand, but there's just no way to draw. And so you can't build a big engine. That's going to be the constraint that I think is you know, limiting here. So I think you want to play relatively money-ish. So, so money-ish, right, going for provinces. But what about a uh, an alt-VP approach where you stack a lot of bazaars and engineers and then you gain a ton of silvers and feodums? Would that be competitive? I could see a world where, like, I don't know that you need a lot of bazaars for that strategy. I mean, I guess some bazaars would help if you hit five. Um, but I could see a world where you get some engineers and take silvers and feed them. My guess, I just meant bazaars to so that you could do more than one engineer per turn. Yeah. Um, of course, the, you know, the, the problem is going to be, like, your deck ideally is going to be pretty thick with silvers, and so you won't be able to, like, line them all up reliably. And so you would need a lot of uh, a lot of bizarres to find them in the the multi engineer hands. Like bizarre wouldn't be a bad card, but you don't, wouldn't necessarily need like a ton of bizarres for it. Um. So I, I totally lost my train of thought. I don't think it would gain silvers fast enough to be like a monolithic strategy where you just go for silver fiat and nothing else. Although the rest of this kingdom is weak enough that maybe uh, I could see a world where you play a strategy that's like money which is mostly like silvers and engineers for money where you're getting some provinces and maybe you, it gives you the option to get some feedums in the end game. Um, one thing to think about is if I saw my opponent going for the feedum strategy kind of overly quickly or, you know, overly committed to it, bandit is going to be a good counter, right? Cause bandit trashes those silvers. And then, you know, every time you play an Rogue. engineer, I play a bandit and then you're in trouble. Rogue, not as much cause Rogue will trash Rogue will one trash silver the one feedums. turn. And then it'll gain silver the next turn. True, yeah. Okay, And then that makes Rogue's sense. kind of trashing half as often. Gotcha. Um, yeah. WAP in the chat is asking, is opening Chapel Theatum a consideration? Um, I would not open with that turn one and turn two. I think it could be viable, depending on what your shuffles are, turn three and turn four, to maybe add in, like if you're getting trashed very fast, you're like super trashed at Chapel, and you're like, I need to add Payload ASAP. I think you consider adding a Theodum and then trashing with Chapel um, sometime around like you know, turn three, turn four, turn five. Maybe that's something you can think about. I don't think it'd be the opening, but it's something you could do. Um, I think my inclination, it, like if you're if you're playing a money deck, you don't need to worry about like making sure you can draw everything. Like you you can't draw everything here. You probably just want to get good stuff into your deck quickly. And so I think kind of key cards to look at here are Bandit and Engineer because they gain you stuff. Maybe Rogue as well. And I'd be looking to, like, chapel down a bit, and add one or two of those cards, give me some treasures, and then start provincing. Uh, crop rotation will definitely be worth getting. It's kind of good in general and probably good for money. Let me look at what y'all have done. I haven't actually looked enough. I think chapel silver and chapel engineer both seem totally fine. Uh, why the two fee them immediately, Kimmy? Turn three? Uh, for trashing. Okay. Yeah, I think she's about about to have yeah, that payoff. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was hoping to line them up with a chapel and yeah. trash them. Yeah, I, I think, I think three theodum might be a bit much. Cause like the, the moment you trash one or two of them, your deck's going to start getting thick again and lining up with chapel is going to be a little bit tough. Um, but yeah, like I was just saying to, to WAP in the chat, I don't think the idea of, oh, why'd you only trash the one? Oh, so you're kind of going for feed them for points. Ah. Uh... See, I don't, I, I don't know when there's too much silver. <laughs> yeah, in, in in this kingdom, I would say there's no such thing as too much silver. You're basically playing big money, and big money is happy to have a deck with like any number of silvers in it. 
The way I think about it is just like, imagine you could add as many silvers as you want. Like you just threw infinite silvers into your deck, right? You'd be hitting like roughly 10 every turn. And if your goal, like in a simple big money kingdom, was just to buy province every turn, you'd be really happy with that. So simple big money deck, you're happy adding as many silvers as you can get your hands on because the goal is just to have a, a hand that has eight or more coins in it. Uh, with an engine, you often want to avoid taking too many silvers because a hand that's just like eight, you know, eight money worth of silvers is a lot worse than an engine can do. You can build like multiple provinces pretty easily and so the silvers get in the way. This is not a kingdom where I'd worry about having too many silvers. I would take any silvers I was given. I mean, of course, there's like an argument for keeping Fiatum for points, but I think that early in the game, I would have just trashed the Fiatum for sure for the silvers, and then you could probably start provincing pretty fast. Um, Bandit seems not bad. You are a little over-terminaled. So here's a question that's not specific to this particular kingdom. Um, I tend to play Dominion with uh, friends and relatives, and so I, I usually end up playing four-player games. Oh, um, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so given how quickly piles tend to run out in four-player games, um, and I know obviously there's more victory cards in four-player games than there are in two-player, but... Uh, is engine still the best, generally the best strategy in games with that many people, or maybe not because it takes longer to, to spin up? Mm. I, I'm going to be very straightforward with you. <laughs> I don't play four player games. I, I don't even think I'm <laughs> enough of an expert to comment on four player games. You know, most of the competitive scene is two player. Uh, yeah, I yeah. just like asking that like in the general Discord or something. Like there, there are some people who play three, four player with some regularity. I think like Haka and Dan Brooks. I want to say um, dabble and Apostolic Ruler. There's at least a few of them who play three player sometimes, and I think you can get an answer from some of them. Um, I I am not particularly qualified on four player games. My guess is money is viable more often and engines are viable less often in games with more than two players. And that, that sure. you know, ratio probably goes up in favor of money the more players you add. Um, but it also definitely goes up in favor of attacks because yeah. your attacks are hitting more than one person. Yeah, exactly. Like witch and stuff. But yeah. Like, I think my three player rating is like 27 or something right now because I played seven games ever. <laughs> um, it ain't pretty. Yeah, I remember back when I first started playing Dominion, uh, I actually thought Bureaucrat was a pretty okay card <laughs> mm -hmm. because I always played with multiple people and it always hit at least one person, if not, you know, two or three of them. Yeah. Uh, and I was always kind of pleased with that. But yeah, now I'm, I've am i learned a lot. <laughs> this would actually be a weirdly fine kingdom for Bureaucrat because like your goal here is just to kind of get trash and add silvers. And top decking a victory card is actually a pretty nice counter to crop rotation. Um, Bureaucrat is very rarely a card worth buying. But this might be one where I would consider it. Plus, there's feed them around. Um, did I hear you saying something a second ago, Kimmy? I'm just saying, like, t uh, th three and four player games can be total crap shows. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I can imagine. I, I stay away from them with, with a reason. Um, why the multiple chapels? I see you have... How many? Like, I haven't been seeing them, and I really want to trash my cards. Yeah, I'm not loving the, the chapel. So, like, chapel itself is kind of like a dud card, right? Like, you're adding a junk card to your deck most of the turns. And I, th I think the correct Ooh. answer was take fewer Fiatum. Uh, like, one or two, and you line them up and trash them, and then you're good to go. Or the other answer was trash that Fiatum the first time you saw it, because you passed on it um, a few turns back. But chapel is a card you very, very, very rarely add to your deck late. Like, you gain chapel in, like, 85 90% of games, and it's usually turn one or turn two. And then that, you never gain it again most of the time. Because Chapel is super effective when 90% of your deck is junk, right? You're guaranteed to line up with a bunch of junk, probably four junk in your five-card hand. But then the more cards that are in your deck, the less likely that Chapel is to find the junk, the fewer turns you're going to be getting out of trashing stuff. Thank you for that input. Um, Folivora. I think I'm pronouncing that. 
Yeah, I mean that's that's more or less what I uh, had noticed too. If uh, like we had one guy, I remember who loved like he didn't really play to win. He just played to make everybody else's decks miserable. <laughs> so he would always get like pirate ship or you know whatever the worst attack was in the kingdom. That was his favorite card. Um, and yeah, it definitely changed up the games a lot. Yeah, I, th I think the, the Mass Fiata strategy was a little bit of a weakness here. Like, I think adding yeah. a Fiata number two could have worked with the single chapel you had it, but I don't think adding a bunch of chapels in Fiata is going to get you silvers fast enough. Probably the Bandit or um, Engineer and committing to that is good. Yeah, I think the only way to make Fiata work would be to have a deck that's capable of piling out very quickly. Um, and I, I don't know if this had that because there wasn't enough draw yeah, to do one, that. The one thing I say about Panda's deck is I don't think the Sage is doing anything for you. Like, literally mm -hmm. the only conceivable value of that Sage is if the Chapel happens to be the very top card of your deck, it can skip over the Chapel, which is statistically quite unlikely. I think the Sage probably could have been just another Silver. Uh, right. Right. one more i didn't think that game would be so fast <laughs> yeah that, that game went very fast it's a lot of people watching you guys <laughs> no pressure all right so what are y'all thinking here so it looks like not a ton of draw just slay and then den of sin to help kind of kick off your next turn and so um minion kind of but not Really, you're not going past, uh, you're not getting a larger hand with minion. You're just kind of resetting once you discard all the way down. You could, I guess you could use minion as a way of drawing your deck, but it would, it would involve like spending all of your cards down to one or two cards and then playing minion to get back up and then spending them all down again. I don't know. I'm, I don't know how to use minion too well. I have to practice more with that card. Uh, imp. I guess you have some draw with Imp. From Exorcist, that is. Yeah. Um, Sentry is your trashing. Is that the only trash? Oh, Priest. Priest is Exorcist probably going to... trash, too. Yeah, so you're probably going to open Priest Silver. And what are you thinking, Kimmy? Um, hmm... Yeah, thinking like priest for trashing, probably silver, so I can try to get that early five. Oh, are you cutting up? I'm not sure I can hear you. Oh, I don't know. I I think uh, priest followed by silver, so I can try to get a five for sentry. You don't have any villages. Yeah, no villages. Oh, I disagree with that. I think there's, oh, the, there's two yeah. villages here. Can you spot them? Imp. Okay, um, let's see. Imp is not a village. No? <laughs> Imp, Imp is like a so, laboratory. But it can play a card that you have don't have in play, right? And then it and then that right. card adds the action. Right. So like let's just take a simple card like like Guide, for example. Guide, the turn you played, is functionally just a cantrip, right? Plus one card, plus one action, it's like all it does. So let's say you have a hand that's, like, a, your starting hand has an imp, a guide, and a three coppers. What happens if you play the imp and then use the imp to play the guide? Where does your hand end up in terms of, like, actions and cards? Oh, yeah, you'd have plus two actions. No? Yeah. You wouldn't? Really? Where's the plus no. two You card? may play an action card from your hand that you'd... So oh, you yeah. would oh because you're using one okay yeah you're right you would only have one um yeah so you spent an action playing the imp and the imp played another card for free so it's breaking even and so, so if, if you had like imp and a terminal card like uh imp and slay you play the imp you play the slay your turn is done uh, you play imp and you play a guide you're back to plus one action because the guide covered the cost of playing the imp so imp's like a laboratory oh. that's restricted in that it's like a lab that only gives you plus action if you've got a card you haven't played before that's how I think about imp. Would it so be I guess one of them is in the ghost then. Yeah, I was gonna say captain. Wait, I heard two people uh, talking there. Oh yeah, you're right, captain and ghost. Yeah, he's got it. Yeah, captain, and ghost. Ca captain and ghost. I think are the, the two correct answers here. 
Um, but in both cases, it's not an endless supply of action. It's it's just right. one extra action for now, each one. Note here that Captain the turn you play it is not a is not for the yeah. same reason mm-hmm. that imp isn't right. It's just it's neutral. Like you you use a captain and like you declare a captain, play a patrician or whatever. You end up getting plus one action, so it'd be like a normal cantrip. The village effect of captain comes the next turn because you're getting to play an action anyway. But right. the second turn, you have to spend an action playing the captain. So if at the start of your turn, you're like, captain, play a patrician. Now you got plus one action, but you didn't spend an action playing the captain that turn. So yeah. the next turn, captain will be a village effect. Uh, Volivore is asking about exorcist versus priest in the opening. Um, mm. I see an argument for both of them. So, you know, priest, silver. Um, I heard, I think it was Panda was saying priest, silver. And, and Kimmy might have also said that. Um, I think both of them are discussing hitting five i think you know priest silver in a century um or even din of sin is like that's a good opening like it gets five real fast exorcist is not good at hitting five um exorcist however gets you nice stuff like will-o'-wisps and imps which are really good um so i think either of those could be viable i feel like exorcist maybe later on that so that you can also get the ghost but like i feel like i'd want more higher cost cards for that trashing to get like the imp and the I think my opening here would be Slay Exorcist, but Priest Silver is really? not that opening. Yeah. Slay yeah. Exorcist. Yeah. Awesome. Assuming 4 3. If I had 5 2, I'd probably just open with Sentry. Or Den of Sin. Yeah, yeah. Actually, 5 2 Den of Sentry. 5, five 2 is actually Den of Sin Exorcist. 2 5 is what? like Slay Sentry. Wait, um, how could you get Sin Because Exorcist? of the draw 2 from Den of Sin, which is oh. Gandir Hand. Yeah, so, so this is the big reason why the 5 2 versus the 2 5 is different here, is Den of Sin goes straight to your hand. And so the reason why I'd want Den of Sin if 5 for my turn 1 hand is because I could then use it immediately before I'd even shuffle my deck, get an Exorcist immediately turn 2. And a 5 and a 4, you know, those are two good, good openings. I'd take both of those. Um, on 2 5, the Den of Sin is less valuable to me. I'm sure you're going to shuffle anyway. And so I would take uh, probably just Slay Sentry on 2 5. So you said on three four you would be taking like slay exorcist. Why why slay over a silver, for example? Like, is it just because the fives aren't particularly useful, or uh, what's the thinking behind that? It's it's sort of more of if I'm opening with exorcist. Like I, I do think priest silver um, to get early centuries in Den of Sin is like a very viable strategy. Um, the argument for Exorcist is it's going to be much slower to get five, but it's getting you like other good stuff. Like Wisp and Imp can draw very well. Um, like Wisp can draw other Wisps. It can draw Imps. It can draw Slaves. It can draw Patrician. It can draw Fool's Gold. All cards I might want. And so uh, I get the Exorcist to pick those up early. Now, if I'm trying to pair a card with Exorcist, Silver is kind of awkward because like Silver is helpful at hitting five, but Exorcist is actively harmful at hitting five, right? Like a hand with Exorcist in it is really unlikely to have five. You'd have to have like Right. Actually, you literally can't. Like, there's there's no there's no hand there turn three or turn four in which I could play the exorcist, trash with it, and still have five. Like best case scenario, I have like silver, three coppers, exorcist, and then hit five. I have to not trash. And so, like, you could take a gamble. You could open silver exorcist, hope to have like the silver in one hand, hit five that hand, exorcist in another hand, trash in that hand. Um, but it, I guess it's just not that likely. And so the advantage of slay is it just it draws cards, right? So. If I'm kind of committed to, like, I'm just going to trash with Exorcist and not hit five all that fast, um, Slay helps me advance through my deck faster, see the Exorcist more often. And so given I have an Exorcist to my deck, Silver seems less important, whereas Silver pairs fine with the Priest because it helps you hit five or six even. Six for Captain would be great. And it doesn't have the... Priest also has this drawback if you don't want Priest plus Slay because they're two terminals and they might collide with each other. Uh, So I think Exorcist... Slay and Priest Silver are all, all good openings. So here's another question then. Since um, since actions are quite limited in this kingdom, um, and draw is mediocre, um, and we have Palace available, mm-hmm. I feel like I would be going for a money deck. Uh, because an engine won't have a ton of it doesn't we don't have really good pieces for an engine and 
I'm being rewarded with points for getting gold, silver, copper okay. trios. Uh, what about you, Kimmy? Before I, I give an answer, what's your like long term debt composition looking like, and why? Like towards the end of the game, when you start greeting, what do you want your, the cards in your deck to be? Um, so I feel like I'd want like sentries, patricians, <coughs> and imports. Um, if, especially since patrician can put five cost cards into your hand. Like I know that like it's just one that replaces itself, but like. <coughs> Drawing that five might be nice. Um, going for the minion, I think. Mm, I don't really see a good way to use minion with the. There's not a whole lot of cards we can play that will make your hand size a lot smaller. Oh, I think you're cutting out again. Last thing I heard was mm. there's not a whole lot of things in your hand for minion that make the hand size smaller. Yeah. So. Um, I, I guess, like, for minion, I feel like the m main thing is, like, you either get the plus two or the four cards, and the four cards is nice if, like, you have a smaller hand um, and or maybe a crab pan. Um, but, yeah, I think overall getting more money, um, which I think leads to, like, Emporium has, like, the plus one. Um, and then if, if with Sentry and Patrician, you can probably play more than five cards and get that extra victory point. Alrighty, and then actually one more question for the, the chat. I see TKB. What comment are you saying you feel the same way about? Are you going sorry? To yeah, that's that's me. By the way, oh, okay. I'm I'm TKB. Okay. Um, I was I was talking about not having a good grasp of slay. Like I have been looking at it as a weaker card because even though you know it does get you two horses, it's also uh, immediately terminal, and so opening with slay. I feel like I'm not snowballing quick enough if I'm playing a terminal card that doesn't get me benefit this turn. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to cover all of these things now. Uh, Slay seems like the easiest. I don't think Slay's like an amazing card or anything. Like, it, it's fine. But uh, I, I like it more and more the more I play with it. I think it, it was probably underrated when Menagerie first released. It is terminal. And gaining two horses is functional like getting plus two cards. So Slay is a lot like Moat in that regard. It benefit it's like plus two cards, but it costs an action. So as far as like main draw on an engine, it's like, it's not amazing. You, you can build an engine on Moat, but it's not usually your, your main strategy. But it's a lot less bad than, you know, cards like Moat, because one of the problems with like draw, like terminal draw is you draw stuff dead. With Slay, you always get the draw and you never draw anything dead, because you play the card, you know, one turn, you get the horses, and then next turn you play the horses, and the horses never you know draw your actions without your ability to play them. And there's other cards like Enchantress, which are also you know plus two cards in the following turn. But cards like Enha Enchantress has this problem of they stay out of play, right? Duration cards, you play it one turn, and then it's stuck out of play for the next turn, and you don't get the benefit the following turn. So to get like the equivalent of five moats worth of draw, you need ten Enchantresses. Slay's kind of the best of both worlds because it gives you. Um, the plus two cards every turn. You can play the slay every single turn, but it's giving you plus two cards in a way that never draws anything dead. And so the the draw of slay is a nice little combination of like duration draw and normal draw. And the little effect at the bottom is actually just like really nice for deck control. Um, like I didn't, it seemed like a thing that like, oh, maybe do it sometimes. But I just find like the more that I play with slay, having a slay or two in your deck can really help like mid-turn reliability. You can often, like, if you have two sleighs, you play one sleigh, then you put a horse in your hand with the other sleigh, so you can continue on your turn, or you gain something mid-turn, and then you um, put it in your hand immediately to play it again. Uh, mid-turn gains can often be very important. So I think sleigh is just, like, it's a nice all-purpose card in my mind. Um, now, as far as this kingdom itself, um, we talked about a few things. Actually, I don't think y'all have talked about what I think is the main limitation of this kingdom that should constrain you from building too big. Do y'all have an idea of what that might be? Not enough actions. Nope. Yeah, chat's got it. There's no I, plus buy. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. There's no good way to gain things here. Like, the best... You, you can gain, I guess, multiple spirits per turn. You could, like, play Slay for horses, exorcist the horses into stuff. And so you, you could efficiently fill your deck with silvers... Or not silvers. Uh, Will-O-Wisps and Imps uh, without spending gains. But those are the only things you can gain would be Will-O-Wisp and Imp via Slay plus Exorcist. 
Um, but as far as scoring, you know, you can't really score multiple provinces per turn. You can't get multiple engine pieces per turn. And so that's the huge limitation here is you have as many buys as you have turns. And so you got to make each buy count. And so that's the thing that makes me want to build a lot less big. Like you replace guide with market square. And I think this kingdom is a very different kingdom. You build to some like big priest mega turn or something. But without plus buy, that's the main reason I think you don't want to do that. Now, I think, uh, I think as Panda was saying, you, you didn't want to build too big because you didn't have like enough draw. I think draw here is going to be totally fine. I think Dino Sin is pretty good draw. Exorcist can get you Imps and will o -Wisp, which are pretty good draw. You can trash pretty effectively as well here um, via any number of means. And so I don't think you're going to have too much problem drawing. Uh, I think the constraint is just whatever you draw to can't ever be more than one province. And so I, I think that's the main reason I wouldn't want to build too big is you can't build bigger than a province. And that does make me conflicted as far as payload goes between, you know, silver, gold, copper, and fool's gold. I think I lean towards silver, gold, and copper on the grounds of palace points. I think one of y'all pointed that out, you know. If I can't ever score more than one province per turn, then that extra three or six points I might get from palace might matter. So maybe I aim to have at least, like, one silver, one gold, and one copper in my deck for palace. Maybe I shoot for two of each. Um, but I'm definitely thinking about keeping a copper or two around for palace so I can score with that. The alternative is fool's gold. Fool's gold, ignoring palace, is probably a little bit better. Uh, you only need three of them to hit eight, and they can be drawn with will-o'-wisp, which is nice for the exorcist combination. So fool's gold is another combination. Um, now, as far as who the things Kimmy was saying, there was some discussion of minion. Um, yeah, minion's only really good with mid-turn payload. I think you mentioned that. And I don't think that looks very good here. Um, there's nothing here that drives very well with minion except like maybe captain or priest a little bit But minion's gonna be really awkward with exorcist or den of sin or treasures And so I don't want to play with minion very much here And then lastly there was some discussion of patrician and emporium. I am NOT a big fan of those here uh, I think well as it turns out y'all have bought a bunch of patricians, but I think the concern is Emporium <coughs> didn't seem particularly likely to get under uncovered in the first place just because you have no plus buy, and so it doesn't seem like there's going to be a whole lot of turns where you're hitting two and buying Patrician. You know, two cost cards like Patrician or Encampment or whatever are real easy to, like, empty real fast with plus buy because you can buy them for two each. But in a single buy kingdom, you know, the two costs aren't just competing with other two costs. It's not like Patrician versus Slay versus Fool's Gold. It's if I'm buying one thing per turn, no matter how much money it is, you know, Patrician's my only buy. So it's like Patrician versus Captain or Patrician versus Den of Sin are the things that are competing with each other. And so I wouldn't expect Patrician to, you know, even empty in the first place for Emporium to get undercovered or to uncovered. And then buying Emporium isn't bad. You know, it scores, and scoring's pretty limited here. But the problem with Emporium, I think, is it, it only adds one payload to your deck at a time. Oh, no, I can't select Patrician. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can play Guide, right? Yeah, you, you can play Guide if you need the, the term, if you need the action. And then you're fine still. Um, I uh, forgot that. Uh... Yes, yeah, so like the deck I would like to have here has probably roughly eight money in it. Honestly, you don't need a whole lot of treasures to hit eight, and I, you don't want to spend a whole lot of buys on treasures because buys are the really precious limitation here. And so I would like to add a deck that's got eight-ish, and then trashes enough that I find those eight coins or whatever they are kind of reliably. And so I, I think my deck composition is probably like, you know, a gold, two silvers, a copper, and then some draw cards, something to, along those lines. And then you're adding like Den of Sin or Captain or something like that um, to top it off. That Captain requires the card to be in the supply deck. <laughs> yes, that is true. Um, the card has to be in the supply. So that also be, would be true like if all 10 guides got taken or something, Captain could not play a guide from an empty supply pile. So I think Panda Bear's figured out how to draw his deck, and I assume he's working toward getting eight. Yeah, I in I his deck right now. I think the big trouble getting to eight. What was that? I'm having trouble getting to eight. Yeah, I'm you're almost there. Yeah, I think the big limitation Panda's facing is you don't have enough money right now. You got the draw. Yeah. Um, 
you just need to get eight money in your deck as soon as possible. I'll try to figure out how to do that in as few buys as possible. I don't see like a single card you could have bought that would have gotten you to like eight next turn. So, um, yeah, I think add like you know, a minion and a gold or a silver and a silver or whatever, something along those lines, and get eight and then start provincing. Uh, to answer Full of War's question, I think I talked about this a second ago. Uh, I think Fool's Gold's competitive. I think I lean towards Palace just because the Palace points are significant um, in a single buy kingdom. But I think Fool's Gold, you just need three, and Will O' Wisps draw them are both two good arguments for Fool's Gold. I think there might be a scenario where you get Fool's Gold. Like if I just hit two a bunch for some reason in the opening, like maybe my Exorcist kept failing to line up with my Estate or something, I could see that motivating me to pivot towards Fool's Gold. Like I just couldn't buy silver. Um, I think palace points are enough to make me want gold and silver, but I don't think the fool's gold idea is bad. I think those are both two good reasons for it. Um, let's see what Kimmy's deck looks like. What's the advantage of Seize the Day? Play your turn again. Well, so bear in mind, like, so Seize the Day is, uh, usually incredibly strong like having an entire extra turn is amazing but this is actually one of the examples of like a weakest scenario for seize the day which is you do have to spend a buy on seize the day <laughs> and so yeah. if, if the kingdom is limited such that like the only thing you can do at the end of your turn is functionally buy one card then <clears throat> you know buying seize the day is trading off with buying a province and so forth i, I think wap's point is just like the, the advantage of Fool's Gold is it duds less often, and the advantage of Seize the Day is if you dud, you can just buy Seize the Day and try again. And so, yeah, that is one more minor argument, I think, in favor of, of Palace. Um, I mean, in general, of course, Seize the Day is much weaker here than normal. Okay, so Panda's now got eight, and I assume is now probably looking to green every turn from here on out. Mm -hmm. I think that's the goal, at least. Uh, where does Kimmy's deck stand? I'm not sure how much money. Do you know how much money you have your, in your deck total, Kimmy? Not many. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's important for you to get to 8 ASAP. I think Kimmy is like one turn behind Panda in uh, getting that payload where she needs it to be. But she also got a couple of Emporiums, which might help balance it out. I don't know. Um, so here's a question. So big money mm -hmm. uh, usually starts greening, what, like turn nine, I think? Uh, depends a lot on the kingdom. Are you asking? Here? Sure. I'm not too well, sure. Assuming, assuming it's just like a pure, yeah, assuming a kingdom like this, uh, assuming it's just like a pure big money strategy, maybe, uh, well, I guess there's no real draw on this one. Let's assume it's just a pure big money strategy, right? You just buy the highest money that you can. Um, I'm trying to remember what turn that usually starts getting province. I have no idea. Of course, you know, the answer is never play pure big money because it's really, really bad. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I couldn't tell you exactly when. You know, the so, yeah, the reason I'm asking is because Panda is reliably drawing his hand every turn. Right. Um, but it's also turn 14 now. And I'm just trying to, in my head, kind of compare what that looks like to a deck that, instead of having a whole bunch of draw, just has money and has an average hand of eight anyway. Yeah, so I feel like this is probably at least a turn or two slower than you know really ought to have been the case. Um, I wasn't following yeah, that's you know, fair. The, the early turns along too closely to say exactly, you know, where there might have been some, you know, lost time there. But I think you know, the goal is to like, you know, get draw and get eight coins in your deck as, as quickly as you possibly can. Um, as far as how it compares to you know big money ultimate though, uh, one big problem, big you know, the, the simple big money strategy is going to face is it might start greening early, but it's not going to green reliably from there on out. You know, if you like run like one of the like little simulations with a deck that's just like buy gold if you can buy gold buy silver if you can buy silver buy province if you can buy province etc is it might it'll start buying provinces soon and then it's gonna be hitting eight off and on it'll buy gold a bit when it misses it by duchy 
the deck that you know Panda and Kimmy are aiming towards, it might start a turn or two later greening than just buying treasures. I've had to guess, but it's going to keep improving in reliability, or at least kind of maintaining reliability, right? Because you can keep like gain horse with slay, exorcist horse into imp or will o wisp. Uh, you can trash all your starting cards, and so you're like you're adding a draw card for every province you're adding. And so it's not really declining reliability. So once it starts hitting province, it's probably not going to stop. And so you'll have province like five turns in a row compared to okay. big money, which might buy province, buy gold, buy province, buy duchy, and so forth. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, like full of worth saying in the chat, like, you know, Panda's drawing way past what their deck needs to. And this is like, again, kind of an indication that you might have drawn, uh, like you might have built too much, right? In this kingdom... If you can only buy one province per turn, then you want to start greening as soon as your deck can do one province per turn and not longer than that. And so if you're hitting way more than like one province per turn, like you're overdrawing a lot, you might have spent a turn or two long, a turn or two too long building. And then, yeah, yeah, I got to eight too late too. So that slowed yeah. me down. Yeah, I think um, I have to go back and look on when you got these patricians, but I have a suspicion that these patrician buys. The patricians don't look very important to me. Mm -hmm. um, like if, if they're competing with other cards uh, that are potentially payload, then those are likely to be better. Yeah, like I see turn six, it looks like you bought a patrician when you could have hit at least three and bought a silver. Right. Um, where else were these patricians gained? Kimmy got it on two. Like, on two, Patrician, I think, might be justifiable. Um, not necessarily bad. Uh, I don't... I The buys are such a limitation that I don't think I'll take Patrician over Silver. Just because I know that if I buy the Patrician now, I'm going to have to waste another buy on Payload you know, down the road. And so I'm going to take the Silver when I can get it. Just because I want to conserve my buys as much as possible. And Silver is kind of like a must-buy because I need eight in my deck. Whereas Patrician is more optional. The minion also seems kind of unimportant to me. I'm not... When did you pick up the minion? The minion's basically just like a fancy silver in your deck right now. It's yeah. slightly better than silver, I guess, because it can be drawn on patrician. So if I, I had a choice between patrician... Or silver and minion, I guess minion's a little bit better. Um, but, yeah, the minion kind of feels awkward. So Full of War is asking what Kimmy's options are. Uh, where do we stand on points? Uh, so Panda... Oh, did Panda just dud? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Now, one thing I will say is it looks like you have a little bit more money in your deck than you need, if I'm not wrong. All right, you have gold, silver, minion, three coppers. So one thing that might could have helped mitigate this dud would be to trash one of those. Like, either trash two coppers or trash a minion. Don't trash, you know, gold or silver because you lose palace points. But that would have made your deck slightly smaller and more likely to draw. I would have been thinking about doing that. But uh, all of a sudden, it looks like... Uh, Oh, Seize the Day is actually a good buy there. I like that idea. But, um, yeah, how does how does Kimmy win from here? Kimmy's going to be in a bad spot, I think, is the answer. Uh, I think unless Panda duds, I don't see a good way for Kimmy to win, right? Because Panda's deck's likely to consistently hit 8, and even if he misses, like, for a turn, buying, like, an Emporium is going to be fine enough to keep the points lead. It, it's looking like Panda's got the win this time. Um, so where did Kimmy's deck go awry? Priest Silver is alright. I, mean, I do like that the Exorcist allows, you know, Panda's deck to continue improving over time, even while greening. Like, you can keep adding Wisps, keep trashing pretty effectively. Um, so I think the Eventual Patrician was good. Uh, Kimmy got a Slay, turn 4. That makes sense. Can we eventually get an exorcist? I think maybe you might have overdone it with trashing a little bit. I think we both did. I think we both got rid of too much of our coppers before we were... Oh, actually, that, that was not my point exactly. Well, that might also be true. I'd have to go back and look to say whether that was true. But my point was... 
Kimmy bought a lot of trashing cards, right? A, right? I believe a priest, a sentry, and an exorcist. And, like, in a decent engine kingdom, I could easily see buying priest, sentry, and exorcist, right? Like, trashing early is good. All those are good trashers. They serve various functions that could make sense. Uh, here, again, I think the central defining feature of this kingdom is the lack of gains. There's just no way to add a bunch of cards to your deck quickly. Um, you're adding one per turn. And so what you really want to think about is, like, what do I want my deck to look like? It's probably like gold, silver, silver, copper, and then some draw cards. And you want to buy basically those cards in as few turns as you can so you can start greening. And so if you add like a sentry, like just a sentry or just a priest or just an exorcist, one trasher of any of those three can eventually mm -hmm. trash your whole deck if you want it to. And it only costs you one buy to get fully trashed. It's going to happen a little yeah. bit slower, but that's fine, because even if you don't hit like the maximum price number, you're constrained by one buy anyway, so you buy one of the cheaper cards you needed instead of the, one of the more expensive cards you needed, and you eventually get trashed. Whereas if you buy you know three cards, well, you're going to get trashed real fast, but then you've spent two buys, so it's functionally like two whole turns getting additional trashers. And so I think three trashing cards might have been overkill. I think probably one of them ought to be Exorcist. Exorcist just you know seems good in general. Gaining will o wisps and imps kind of sort of circumvents the the plus gain limitation because you don't you won't need to spend your buys like the precious buys on draw cards when you can gain the draw cards via exorcist and use mm -hmm. wisp and imp as your draw and so I think I like exorcist as one of the buys and I think that should the other one could be a priest or a sentry and two might be fine but uh, one thing I would think is just three trashers is probably more than you want here. Um, Full of War is asking, was Sentry good? Uh, I feel like on 5-2, it, it just surely has to be Sentry, just because Sentry is so fast at trashing if you open with it. On 4-3, I think it, there's a good argument for, um, for a skipping Sentry entirely. Like, if you already got an Exorcist, maybe add a Priest, um, I could see skipping Sentry in the 4-3. Sentry's in general, of course, a very good card. Yeah, getting Captain, I think, was probably a mistake. Like, the Captain could be a gold, and that could contribute towards, um... Actually, your limitation was you trashed all your copper. So I would have considered not trashing every single copper, Kimmy, because that could have gotten you palace points as well. But yeah. Yeah. Captain's normally a great card, but it wasn't that strong here, I don't think. Um, again, you're just kind of limited what your deck can do. And so with palace around, I want to spend a buy on a gold, and you know, Captain's just trading off of that. And it, it pains me to say buy gold, but this is the kingdom where I think buying gold might make sense. All right. Um, I'm going to end this recording now. It was good talking to you all. Thank you so much. Yeah, see you around.